Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Mike O'Mara Show. Enjoying our second decade of the show that has become a daily routine for thousands of listeners in great places like Deming, New Mexico, St. Louis, Missouri, Michigan City, Indiana, Lutz, Florida. It has been uh, locked in and decided. Uh, but it was my fault. We didn't know. My wife didn't know. We went to a wedding up there. It wasn't I pulled Lutz. the I pulled the it's email Lutz. of the guy to yell at him, Mike. And I, can I play you something real quick? Please. Just a brief tape. Absolutely. This is from uh, a website called Melody Hearts Tampa, and she's a realtor. And this is what she had to say. I did some research yesterday. Oh, no, this is from YouTube. Hey, everybody. Melanie Atkinson here, realtor with Smith & Associates in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. And today we're going to have a pronunciation lesson. We will start with one that just about everybody mispronounces, the city of Lutz. It's spelled just like the ice skating jump Lutz but here it's pronounced Lutz. So our apologies. We actually, uh, we had a meaningless conversation yesterday. All right, I'm going to get some people angry here. All right? How? Because, all right, well, you know, here it is. Has everybody ever uh, thought about the fact that everybody that lives there and everybody that's uh, grown up there and everybody that has called the town what they call it is effed? And that we're all correct because it's L U T Z. Spell like it right. Butts. Yeah. It's, but anyway, uh, it's Lutz. It's, it's where people live. And I always defer to that. I remember the first time I got an affiliate in Nevada. Right. And I right. said, like everybody else around the country, I said, Nevada. The, you know? The Glover Park versus Glover Park. Yep. Glover Park is technically the proper name and pronunciation. Danny Glover. Right. Like yeah. a glove. But it's That's Glover what it would Park. Be. Savian uh, to me. Mm-hmm. So that's it. All right, let me get my. It's phone. official. Is it Lutz or Lutz? It's official. It's that official. I can't have children. No, it's official. They're I'm the sorry, com- I'm doing that bit from. Uh, <laughs> they're the commanders from, from Debbie Downer. <laughs> that's right. Remember that? Yes. Where they all crack up at their Mike, Disney World. It's official. I did, can't have did children. Did you see the news for Chopper for the for the Washington football so team? So funny. Oh, have we made the announcement? Oh, no, no. CNN just confirmed it. Yeah, they're the but, commanders. But la- Ooh, but la- can't have children. But the last- Washington Commanders? Yeah. Last night, I like at, the commanders. during the, the, what, 6 o'clock news, yeah. Yeah. News 4 had a chopper over FedEx Field. Chopper 4, Mike. Chopper 4. <laughs> you know you it know, well. All right. Uh, it, 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 this is really getting into the detail when it comes to uh, news coverage in D.C., but this is from when I remember it. I wonder if it's still true. So they put a chopper over... FedEx Field because they want to justify having their chopper. Do you ever get good car chases in D.C.? Do you ever get the choppers that are following perps? I never see it. And I thought that Fairfax County, which is a a massive police department next to our nation's capital, had a rule that they couldn't and then you got airspace in DC. You yeah. never get the aerial. The last like, time they did it, shots. the last time they did it was that there was a copter over Oscar's house Monday night. Yeah, but you're looking at you're looking at it in a different manner, Mike. Yes. Chopper Four is simply a tax write off for a company that's printing money. Well, I understand that, yes. but I mean in LA, for example, oh, how many a lot times of fun. do we get that? Yeah, a lot of highways. Video? It's fun, yeah. you know. Give it um, to us, Channel Four, please. <laughs> too yeah. much traffic. Yeah, too much traffic. You have to stop at every red light, uh, or you're going to crash the third. Not uh, like third LA street pony. End. Well, well, well you know LA's got those big highways. Yeah, they hey, got overpasses. Hey, Pony, in your face. Mike. He roasted you. This has nothing to do with the point <laughs> we're trying to make. for a minute. <laughs> Chopper 4 is up live shot to the news, which, by the way, is dying. Right. Uh, local news is. And they zoom in on the gift shop for FedEx Field, and it has a big banner already placed day before that says Commanders in it. Because you know how it's a very open stadium with a lot of windows? They can just get I, a shot know, of it. I am constantly plugged in. I truly am. I am constantly plugged in. And uh, the significance of the national news and this story uh, must have been lost on me because uh, no, it, it didn't it didn't drop into my feed. No, I didn't it's, see it. It's on not. Any of the You're news. a Floridian. Yeah, it, it's just not there. Yeah. So, I mean, do we have a logo? Uh, no, we have. Well, I haven't seen the logo yet. Well, let me see. I'm sure it, if it is, it's, it looks like a. A European soccer team's logo. You think? The crest I saw. Modern, very modern. If I'm not mistaken. 
It's a caricature of Joe Gibbs. Let Mike. me look at it. No, there's not a logo. <laughs> there's there's no not crying. a logo. There's Are no you crying. kidding me? There's not a logo. There's not a logo. They just cheated us. To be fair, Mike, they've, unfair. they've only had 18 months. Give them some time. All right, enough of that. Uh, <laughs> but isn't so, that funny? That It's funny, yeah. That, like, that, funny. They were like, you know what? Let's get ahead of this. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody knows the name. Who cares? Let's put the banner up. Well, I, I, can I just, uh, for someone who has really thrown rocks at dc sports team yes. names the washington commanders works fine yeah it's great it's fine that it's is great. that is a great name i think it's a good name commander military washington dc commanders and i know, love uh, it uh mostly because we've had five years of daniel snyder saying he will never with capital letters never right. change the name yeah he's a hump i'm gonna uh, send you the logo mike oh you have the logo yes, you found yes, it yes mm. Are Here you making go. a joke? No, no, no. It's not a, I wish it was a joke. A visual joke probably wouldn't work on our meeting right now, would it? Um, send it to the team, and you Thank all you. tell me what you think. You tell me what you think about this incoming now. Okay, coming in now. Yes. On this 2-2-2-2 two, 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 uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. They incorporate the keeping, stars. Obviously keeping the burgundy and gold. I see something here, a flag that's just that's got the, the That's the a letters. D.C. flag. No, I've got I'm the just, uh, just Washington getting... Commanders with the W that looks like a WWE. Mm-hmm. Right now I'm looking at that. It's retro Are we talking about... The logo is the top left-hand corner. The circle. Oh. With the established 1932. Yes. Yeah. That's, That's fine. It looks like a high school yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Pony that rescued does. himself with that one. So Pony, funny. that's awesome. Ew. Yeah, ew right, indeed. Well, anyway... <laughs> Uh, at least it's done. I like saying that the Washington Commanders. So the Commanders are coming are yeah. driving down. Uh, yeah, master that, and Commander. A, um, Touchdown, you know what Commanders. I'm curious, I'm curious about what Donnie Simpson's going to say about it. No, I, don't, I haven't heard from him yet. So mm. I get uh, I, I get blown up on uh, every like month or so. I will get blown up a little bit on LinkedIn, and it, it'll it'll send me an email, and uh, it says these people have been looking at your profile. And then, uh, so I go to that, and I'll check it out, and I'll say, oh, who's that? Who's that? Is this a radio person? Is this somebody, uh, you know, who's she? Uh, and I will, I, will check, I will check stuff <laughs> this out. This guy. And then, then they say, you know, if, if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, it's, everybody's, it's been around for a thousand years, but- It's businessman you know, Facebook. Yes. It's businessman Facebook. And so uh, LinkedIn has a feature where they, they, they can look at your profile without, in stealth mode, where they don't know you're looking at it. And uh, you can get more information uh, if you subscribe and you yeah. pop for the money to. Right. It just it just allows are you, you all access. Are you access a premium to, member, Mike? I I became a premium member yesterday. Yes. Oh, good. the mm-hmm. the rube The rube uh, move is when you stalk people, and yeah. you don't realize that they can see they that see you, you saw them. Yes. <laughs> it's a. I've been it's a, a silly. I've been a premium member for five years. I find myself gravitating towards TV news personalities yeah. i will connect with almost if you if you're an anchor and you're down here in southwest florida or up in dc mm-hmm. and i see you i will uh i will log in yeah, your but TV, i haven't, your been, TV I haven't file. been on what's that your what? tv file uh i just haven't Who seen uh a lot of it and i just don't hang out there very mm-hmm. often and i certainly don't it's not a fun it's on, not a fun website to cruise well, it's not. It's not. But I mean, it's just I'm always curious about right. what's I'm curious. And it's fascinating uh, for me personally, the connections that I have Let me look what uh, that, that interest me looks like. that are American University people. Okay. Because I like to see what they're up to. Young, old, new, in between. So uh, I decide that I'm going to hop around and Oscar's all over uh, LinkedIn. And I see uh, Oscar's uh, LinkedIn profile page yes oh and, yeah you uh, oh man your profile page is sparse and uh and then thing. looks like he's a bot <laughs> he's just standing by yes yeah yeah Jesus. and at the top of course uh is the hot chick yes yeah, yeah, uh, been there Donnie the whole time. simpson and uh what's that she's been there the whole time well yeah i mean not the whole time you've been on linkedin yeah, before uh, it was it's, Podville it's, beforehand. Pod, when he, when she went Podville. with Podville. Yes. And uh, in order to find anything out about our show, you have to scroll, 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 scroll. And it just, uh, you know, and, and there it is. So you got to feed know? the beast, I mean, Mike, I always I say. I would think that, uh, you know, at least uh, at the top of your, uh, you know, page, you would at least put your association. That's not how LinkedIn with, works. With this show. What do you mean that's not how LinkedIn it works? It just doesn't. It gives you the most prior, it shows your, in, in chronological order. 
What like what? What's the latest thing you've done? But doesn't it give a title? It does. But you see it. This is funny. When, CEO when, of Podville. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's is that not true? Little. It also shows that I went back to school and, and pursued my MBA. Is that not true? It also shows that I've been with the Michael Mara show for twelve years. Is that not true? I didn't see that. Well, moment. you got to scroll down. You got to take a deeper dive. This man. Like, I hate it, LinkedIn. It, it's like it's like my mom looking at Facebook and saying, "Like, <laughs> well, how do you do this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now feminize me, do all that. Thing. I'm not. I'm just saying. My only reference point. I, LinkedIn's like a tar pit. I tried to quit it once. I couldn't. let me see yours. Right. Are you on there? I'm I think so. At, you look so like a you would think that child. being yeah, the CEO of yeah. Podville, that would be, would be Podville, but uh, at the very top. I, I think it would be a nice thing that's to a, occasionally. That's a, that's a banner. That's a graphic. Uh, yeah, it would be nice yes. at at the banner to occasionally promote. We just show. we just launched uh, we just launched the Donnie Simpson podcast not two months ago. We launched. Have I ever been at the top of your LinkedIn? Of course. Page? If you look at the old pictures, yes. All right. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't care for LinkedIn. <laughs> Let me look at Rob's profile now. I'd Too like a new alerts. picture. I'd like a new uh, publicity picture. And I'd like one where I'm going like this. <laughs> you can come up here for a shoot I'd if you're welcome. I have to come welcome. up to you. I have plenty of photographers down here. There's pal. cameras in Florida. There are cameras down have here. You sent, it's not have just you sent Mike on bicycles your, with missing teeth. Have you sent Mike your, your headshot? No. You no. should send it to him. Why? He would love it. You think? I think you look nice in it. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Yeah, well, it's, so it's better than got the, all the headshots done at Pod. We did last month. Yeah, it's better than the uh, Commanders logo. I know that. Actually, Rob, your profile. Oh, this is this is not terrible. This is nice. In did you way? say that mine is sparse sauce? We did. Hello. Yeah. Oh, there you're back. You're okay. back, baby. Okay. Did you hit a button? Oh, I haven't. We haven't touched Rob, the thing did on you our hit a button? No, a Pony Soul hit the solo button. I think by accident. Yeah, I think my palm grazed it. Sorry. Uh, my, uh, um, so do um, so you're saying my uh, well, Rob's as sparse as well. If I'm if I'm if I'm being completely well, you're clear. absolutely right. Yeah, this is yeah. the equivalent of not putting up yeah. a uh, banner on uh, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mike, I sent you my headshot. Yes. Be prepare to be dazzled. Did I did I get a, a copy of yeah, that? Yeah, I, I sent it to the Thank team you. so I everybody can that. print it up. This is good for this show. Dad, that just screams dad. It does, but doesn't is it look? A, is that a dingy T-shirt underneath your sweater? No, it's a silk T-shirt. Silk doesn't go white; it has to be cream. <laughs> a silk. I like everything about the picture. Blouses. I love the beard, by the way. I love the the like the few day growth that you have. That thank looks you, good. thank that you. That looks good. I don't like the. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's good. I think. I mean, I would have gone with a dark colored T-shirt. He does look nice, though. He does look nice. Right? Nice, great. like friendly, so or nice, like handsome. Super nice. You're happy with the photographer that did this? Oh, oh Highline. It like, was fantastic. I, in my years, you send him down here. In my years, we can't. You can't afford him. Um, uh, in my yeah, years, you really don't think so? Well, you wouldn't. You just you wouldn't. Why not? Because you, I'm going to challenge you on that. Your your uh, what is it? What send did, me what it would cost me. Uh, subtract the airfare and tell me what it would cost me. To have him uh, come For, down here. Well, I mean, it's not one-to-one -one because he came and shot 15 people here. So? You just want to know that price tag? Photographers can shoot one person. Or you can invite 14 this people is, over. This is hilarious. <laughs> Mike, could you have a group shoot? No, I don't house? need a photographer from D.C. We have photographers down here. Okay. I can do that. I'll send you a new headshot. Uh, this man All has right. shot... Um, I, I think will, his, uh, his last, last uh, portrait was of Jeff Goldblum. Uh, if, from what I saw from his, you know, yeah. Do you want me to smile or yes. serious? Serious. <laughs> I thought he'd go into Jeff Goldblum right now. But I was hoping. Yeah, yeah. he's, uh, he's clearly not, um. Has he really shot Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, that was his last shot before us. I thought he was just joking. Then you look back in his portfolio, you're like, oh my God, this guy's crazy. Headshot. Done. Sent it to you. We're good to go. You, you did? You sent this it? On. Yes. Okay, let me you see can put it. See, uh, you can it. put it on my, uh. You know, whatever publicity material you uh, want to do. Mike, what I like is that you did The iPhone is a beautiful lens. I think lens. that ought to be posted yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I like that you didn't ignore the show logo either. It's not like you're the star of the picture. <laughs> That's a very hard talking head in here. I'm never going to be Oscar's favorite again, ever. It's never going to happen. Let's bring in our uh, talking head. I'm happy with that, too. That's made me laugh now. I'm sorry. That is, that is, is that, you is brought that, me great uh, joy.
Is that a picture that says? It's so is perfect. Is that a picture that says uh, six hours of sleep? That is. Uh, this this picture says work from home. Oh my God! Look at that beard. Look at that oh, look fantastic at this guy. beard. A beard I could never grow I like that. that. Mike, it looks like Letterman on Seth Meyers oh, last there night. There are beards and there are beards. There are beards I like and then beards I love. That is a beard I love. Let's bring Pete Hennessy in here. Pete started listening in 2004 and has been with the podcast since day one. He lives in South Portland, Maine. With of course, nobody talks like that in South Portland no. anymore. No, no, no. They used to, but they don't anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the man, early 70s, you probably get a lot of people going, I'm from Portland. I'm from Portland, Maine. There we go. Now it's just like, hello, I'm from Portland. Yes, did you uh, go to a the... Lovely, there's a lovely bistro uh, just down the street. What? Yes, Rob, what? I, like, I attended the Sea Dogs game. <laughs> the Sea Dogs. We did one time. Uh, South Portland, beautiful. I, I love my cousin Teddy lived there. It was uh, very, very nice. Uh, he is a guidance counselor at the Long Creek Youth Development Center. <laughs> In parentheses, a jail for juvies. That's, I, could, I, I don't have to go. I wouldn't have to go any further on this bio than that. That's what we'll talk. Uh, okay, let me see. Is this another cat guy? Yeah. Uh, he lives in South oh, yeah. Portland with his wife, Jen. Met her in jail. <laughs> uh, they have three cats, Della, Hoppy, and Bagheera. He's a guidance counselor. He has been there for 24 years at the Juvie Center. Uh, an education specialist. Ask him about the Hulu documentary, Jacinta. Is it, did I pronounce that right, Pete? Did uh, I get that right? Jacinta. Jacinta. I'm, I'm having a bad week with pronouncers. You're fine. He received a public administration degree from the University of Scranton. Uh, then did volunteer work in Oregon alongside Hunter Biden. Oh, this is great bio here. So many stuff. After leaving Oregon, he attended grad school at the University of Southern Maine, which led him to his current job. He listens to TMOS every day, usually while walking. He's an old soul who loves Nostalgia Corner. Uh, Rob's got a great one that we haven't got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, well, we're not going to get uh, maybe tomorrow. We can do it tomorrow. tomorrow? Yeah, it's a good fit. Yeah, well, that's the bonus show, though. Uh, no, I'd no, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. Oh, Thursday. We'll do it tomorrow. Today's Wednesday. Yeah. 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 Well, Wednesday. we've got Mark. We've got my buddy Mark coming. Oh, we're fine. Mark's we're Monday. Okay. Mark's uh, Monday. He once chose uh, to not approach Sigourney Weaver, and he was once <laughs> approached by the great Bruce Campbell, Briscoe County Jr. Uh, what's the other thing he's on? The Briscoe oh, guy. Well, he uh, he was very famous for the Evil Dead movies. Evil oh, Dead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, his favorite podcast episode ever was Mike versus the Spider, <laughs> and the pick of Rofo's girlfriend. <laughs> That's going back a ways. I remember that I show, remember though. I remember that. Uh, and he was once caught in an overly intimate situation with a glass of milk. <laughs> Intrigued? You should be. Now here's Pete. Pete, how hey, are you? Great. Oh, man. So there's a guy uh, down at Happy Valley where I play golf. Uh, he's got a whiter beard than you, but he has the greatest beard. The, he has a transformational beard. Let me explain what I think a transformation. A transformational beard is a beard like Pete's, where... It's just so good mm -hmm. that it is an identity beard, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many guys have facial hair. I've had facial hair my whole life. I have this, which, by the way, if you go to uh, any Harley meetup, <laughs> every fat hump has this beard right here. I've always wanted to uh, have one like yours, Pete, but unfortunately it would probably take me probably the better part of a year and a half to get even close to that. So uh, welcome. Uh, great Thank to you. have you here. Thank you for Thank all you. the wonderful support. Uh, delighted that I will be up in your neck of the woods this June, and I'm really looking forward to it. Because oh, great. It's, it's been a year since I've uh, been up there in uh, the great state of Maine, my second home up there. I love it, uh, and I have so much family up there, and, uh, and I still love it. Um, oh, yeah. The... <laughs> The, the question the, is, uh, will your sister be there? That's right. <laughs> I'm getting together with my sister. I'm going down for a long oh, weekend uh, in March. She's coming down to uh, Florida Perfect. again. Perfect. Uh, she likes it down here. She wouldn't, uh, you know, say that to. When she comes to she... Florida, do you mention the fact that she's from away? Uh, no, no, I don't because I don't count. Yeah, and, and Pete will tell you this. Well, you're not a lifer either. You're not from. Away. You're no. from away too, right? Yep. Yeah, I sp I've been here 25 years, and I will always be from away. I would imagine, Pete, that. Uh, Working in a essentially a juvenile detention center is yes. uh, uh, that has to be tough. I mean, these are you know the the kids are tougher than the the adults in many cases. That uh, how long have you been actually uh, involved with that? Is it twenty? Uh, yeah, I'm on my twenty fourth year right now. Twenty fourth year, you have seen it all. Uh, it, it's got to be. I just would think it would be an interesting job to say the least. Yeah, it's never boring. That is for sure. 
and when I started, the funny part was my mother was very nervous. She's like, I don't know that I like you working inside of jail. I'm like, well, here, let me explain it to you. If I was in a regular outside school, I'd have to worry about drugs, guns, all that type of stuff. I don't have to worry about that here. So <laughs> yeah. it's uh, actually the... a very safe place to work. Yeah, but as far as the idea of doing it, you and it says educational uh, teacher, you're essentially a, I'm a teacher, a, a guidance counselor for the kids that uh, come uh, through there. Um, yeah, absolutely. You've seen a lot, I would imagine, in 24 years. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, give me a highlight and a low light. That's what I'd like to hear for working uh, in a juvie hall. My highlight is probably every week I get a phone call. Like, I, we don't have kids here very long, so I'll have them for a year, year and a half. Mm. So as a regular high school guidance counselor, you would have them for four years, get them through school, get them to college. I don't do that. My hope is to just get them interested in going back to school when they leave us. That's, that's the hope for me. Um, but getting the phone calls from past residents saying, hey, Mr. H, I got my shit together. Sorry, Pony. And <laughs> I, need, I need a copy of my transcript because I'm going to go to community college or I'm going to go do this or do that. And that makes me the happiest. I talk to them. I get all their information. And I say, hey, anything else you call me. Like, that's my favorite part of the job. Like, I just... That's great. If that means they're not getting into trouble, they're not moving on to the big boy jail, which unfortunately most of our kids do. Uh, this is you're doing the Lord's work. If you don't mind, uh, Mike, a, a quick question: um, How do you scare kids straight these days when you can't beat them? You don't. You don't. The thing is, you don't scare them, Oscar. He got uh, me. He got me with that because I thought he was acting. I really thought it was going to be a legit. A scared straight should have been. Well, Mike, when he when usually his tell if he starts something with you're doing the Lord's work, there's a left yes, coming. I should have. There's a, you know. I, without be, Oscar, as you know, you've listened a long time. Oscar has oh, a particular yeah. view of how you you know mold manipulate. Men. Actually, that that was the thought process when I first started working here. Okay. They used to do what the. They used to be a little bit more hands-on. Mm, mm, mm. uh, we became more therapeutic, uh, which is great. I mean, the idea is, especially for us in the school, in the outside, they get kicked out of school all the time. They get suspended. They get expelled. That can't happen here. Mm. So when something happens, they're like, well, I guess that's it for school. I'm like, oh, no, you'll be in your next class. Like that's, And we, the idea is to support them as much as we can to show that school isn't a bad experience. Life can be a better experience, and we're hoping that they go and make the right choices when they leave us. It is such a, an interesting uh, line of work, and obviously uh, you've you've taken to it, and I love your attitude uh, working with these kids. Have you, uh, the, you? I love the highlights. As far as the lowlights, you know, as much as they're not bringing guns and drugs and all those yeah. things, uh, they still have, uh, what, what does Ron Burgundy say when he's on the bridge? They've still got Jack Johnson and, and <laughs> somebody Leary. You know, they've still got the old, uh, and I'm sure that uh, you have probably seen your share of uh, altercations. Oh, yeah. My first year here, I was used to be on a different campus and it was more open. So kids would actually leave their housing units and walk to school or walk to the cafeteria and i was driving in the morning they were walking back from lunch and they decided to have a fight in front of my car it's sitting there in my car waiting and there was a huge group of kids wow. pounding each other in front of me so <laughs> i'm like you're ah. sitting there going, doop, doop, doop. yeah i'm like at least up. i don't have to clock in i'm, 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 I'm all right I'm oh my god but the uh, low yeah. light, unfortunately the low lights for me are uh funerals oh I, wow after after so many years here i've had a lot of uh, kids who have passed either from violence or drug overdose. So they get out, they get out, and then they get into the wrong situation. And uh, and they early on, these. yep, early on, uh, I used to attend. I stopped attending. Mm. Oh, too hard, I, I guess. Imagine, yeah. uh, how but you will like you'll like this highlight though. There is another highlight. I use okay. humor a lot because that's generally all I have sometimes. And I used to have a very angry girl who used to ask to come and see me in my office. And she came up one time and she was really, really, she was a violent girl, but I, I really liked her. She's like, Hennessy, I'm so angry. I, I'm just going to pick up this computer and throw it through your window. And I just looked at her and I said, 
damn it. If you do that, I got to fill out the paperwork. And then, you know, it's just a pain in the ass for me. And she just looked at me. She goes, you're not taking me seriously. I'm like, I'm taking you seriously. Just sit down and we'll chat. And that's what she did. <laughs> she did. So, you just, because yeah, you're chill. You're chill. Yeah. I think, I would imagine your, your personality, just talking to you for a couple of minutes here, uh, strikes me as the way you you do that. I think oh, yeah. that that begets, if you're talking to somebody like, uh, let me see an example, even an adult, uh, Mike O'Mara, <laughs> uh, you, you would, you know, you're calming me down, which I think is uh, amazing. It says here, you want me to ask you about the uh, documentary Jacinta. What, uh, yeah. what can you tell us about that? It is, uh, it's on Hulu and it came out uh, about four months ago and it involves a documentary crew following around a young woman who's been in and out of uh, adult jail and fighting a severe drug problem and trying to break the cycle of many years. She spent time at our facility when she was a juvenile, um, very briefly, about six months. So I know her. Um, I knew her pretty well when she was here. I liked working with her. And it also interviews, her family is very extended and a lot of criminality. And her brother actually spent a very long time there. He was notorious here for climbing up on the roof and trying to escape. Um, but uh, it's a pretty powerful documentary. And I would, I, I let my friends and relatives know, you've always asked me over the years what I do. This is what I do. This oh, is- wow. Great promotion for that. So I'd love to watch it. I'll watch it, it tonight. Despite having yeah. my son, Robert, uh, a lot of us, uh, juvenile delinquency is, a, is a, you know, a foreign concept to us. If we watch Jacinta, is it going to give us a, a good entree and an understanding to what the program is like? Yes. Okay. It's not going to focus so much on us. It focuses more on the adult. Right. It just mentions that she spent time as a juvenile it, and juvenile. Is there a common thread? With a lot of these cases, maybe like three pillars. Are you like this is always the yeah, childhood or good single question. family home, or uh, maybe yeah. there was abuse involved that you know nobody knew about. They feel like they've been betrayed by adults. Like what is it? Drugs, mental health, and lack of family. Mm. Bam! Wow. There it is. Down. There it is. Parents out there, uh, you know, I've said to both my daughters, and uh, you know, my daughter, even though I drummed it into her head, was. Uh, associated with it when she uh, had a, a guy that uh, she got involved with who was uh, underwater and he was uh, he ended you know he lost his life mm. it was a horrible situation for our, our family and it just I'm sure you know not just you know you think of kids that uh, you go to funerals you think of uh, violence or anything like that, but probably especially in that part of the world a lot of overdoses uh, oh, yeah. you know with with kids involved in that I wanted to ask you just really quick and I don't want to be Debbie downer about this but oh yeah I do, no that's fine. I think it needs to be mentioned with uh, where we are as a society right now. I think anybody that uh, that digests a lot of news on a daily basis like I do would see the trends around cities all over America where uh, there's just a lot more crime. There's a lot more bad stuff going on. People are getting, uh, you know, in a lot more trouble. And uh, where do you see that being up there, you know, in the middle of the system? Do you sense that, too, that we're in kind of a bad spell right now? I would say for us, we're actually improving. Good. And the reason is there's a, they're developing a lot more interference programs on the outside to keep them from eventually winding up with us. When I first started here, we had 180 kids. And I was in charge of 180 kids. Wow. We're, now, we're now down to 40 because they've done so much intervention early on and trying to keep them in the community. The idea is to at least keep them safe and keep them out there. So that way they don't have to come here. We just get the worst of the worst when there's really no place else for them. It's not safe for them out there. And the idea is to try to keep them safe. That's a tremendous decline in, in numbers. And you represent the entire state of Maine, right? Yeah, there used to be two facilities, but they shut the other one down just because the number started to go down about six, seven years ago. So. Where is that, Bangor? Uh, actually, just north of Bangor. Yeah, um, so I know the state. It's yeah, like, his facility, know, yeah. Mike, is right by the International <laughs> Jetport. <laughs> no, yeah, I go on. I go on lunch and go watch the planes land. All the I, time. I do too. I do. That's therapeutic <laughs> for me too. Watching that. Uh, so it, it, you've got some celebrity contacts here that I want to uh, get to before we let you go here. Uh, you chose not. I I, I, I want to hear about Bruce Campbell approaching you, but you chose not to approach uh, Sigourney Weaver. Tell us. Tell us that tale, please. <laughs> oh yeah, we were uh, we were on a college trip in New York City around Christmas time. And, you know, we went to FAO Schwartz and they were having a little street performance with clowns on the outside of the store. And I also get a nudge like, 
look who it is. And we're standing there. And there's Sigourney Weaver with a shaved head because she had just done Aliens 3. Wow. <laughs> and she's with her young child in a stroller. Oh, we got to go. We got to go. I'm like, I am not going up to her with her children and saying, <laughs> oh, I loved you in Ghostbusters. I'm like, just... <laughs> I think that's the right call. Yes. And I tell you, of celebrity with women, kids. Sigourney yeah. Weaver would probably give off that vibe a little bit. Yeah, I think Especially so. if she's in the middle of the Aliens franchise. Uh, she's yeah. badass. I'd be afraid, too, to <laughs> go up there. But then Bruce Campbell, Briscoe County Jr., who really has an amazing cult following, yes. he approached you. Yeah, we were at, uh, my wife and I, every once in a while, love to go to a Comic-Con just because it's fun, and we like sure. to meet these people, and he was the main speaker host for this one. He had to pay like an extra $100 to go inside and hear him talk and ask questions. I'm like, I'm not doing that. So my wife had to go to the bathroom. I'm sitting outside these big doors, and all of a sudden, he walks out the doors. He's like, hey, man. I'm like, hey, Mr. Gamble. He's like, <laughs> What are you doing out here? I'm like, I'm just waiting for my wife. It's like, all right. And we sat and talked for like five minutes. He's a cool guy, isn't he? He was great. He's such a cool guy. Oh, my God. I got a picture with him. He was just awesome. And you saved 100 bucks. And I saved hundred dollars, and and so much splatter in his career, so much uh, splatter. Although I did watch the uh, the new sci fi thing uh, that's uh, that's out there right now, and uh, a lot of splatter in that too sure. about robots. I don't know, I don't even know what it's called. It was uh, I, I I was tired. Uh, anyway, uh, before we let you go, <laughs> before can I just say uh, y- y- there's a vibe about you that I uh, I feel as though the kids that uh, happen to be. Uh, on that short end of the stick and get into the system because they, they have nowhere else to go. I'm glad that there are people like you that are, uh, that are dealing with them, and uh, I bet you got a lot of success stories, and I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. Is there anybody that you would like to say uh, hello to before we let you go, Pete? Well, definitely my wife, Jen, who, like I said before, I met in jail. 20 years ago, she was a teacher's she aide. Wasn't a, and, she was, oh, she was a teacher's aide. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah, no. She was seven years younger than I, and certainly I I'll kick my coverage on that one. Like, I still don't know how the hell I pulled that off. So, um, <laughs> well, that's cool. But she, she's wonderful. She's absolutely wonderful, and I love her. Uh, you know what? Uh, I just, uh, this segment continues to uh, amaze me how much fun I have doing it. Uh, continued success to you up in the uh, the great state of uh, Maine, the Pine Tree State. And uh, thank you so much for all thank your you. support thank over you, the years. Sir. And good luck. Uh, you know, uh, repeat business. Love to have you back for an update sometime, Pete. Oh, I I'd- would absolutely love to. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's Pete Hennessy. He's our talking head. Rob, we got to take a break. Yep. Uh, that is just, I, I can't tell you enough how much I love this segment. I always have. And uh, just very, very cool. Always very, very special. We lead uh, with we'll love, take, Mike. Lead yes. with love. What's that? Lead with love. Lead with love. Yeah. He's doing oh, the Lord's okay. work, Oscar. The Lord's work. Yes, sorry. How come you can't beat them? <laughs> uh, we'll be back with the homepage after this. Attention Chicago land. Are you sick, logy, or just feel under the weather? Well, you need me, Dr. Larry Chicago. No matter what ails you, I can fix it. Whether it's a sore back, runny nose, or the COVID, I got you. Just put some ice on it. Come see us at the Chicago Family Medical Group, 1062 West Addison, right next to Wrigley. Me and my doctor siblings, Otto, Arlene, Oliver, and Oxnard will set you up and tell you to put some ice on it. You can trust us. We fitted Harry Carey for his bag, so get our details at MikeOmerishShow.com. Hit up the shopping center, get a bonus package, and for God's sake, put some ice on it. Put some ice on it for the love of Gad. Welcome back to the Michael Show. That's Tennessee's favorite character. He loves Larry Chicago. Larry Chicago. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. You're doing the Lord's work. It's Asker Santana's here. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, we have a new sponsor, Catalina Crunch. Yes. And uh, you're going to love it. The first thing you need to know is that Catalina Crunch's cereal is delicious. That's the first thing. The dark chocolate, the cinnamon toast, oh, oh, both yeah. great. Amazing, really, because it's zero sugar, keto-friendly, and low-carb. Most zero-sugar food doesn't taste delicious, but Catalina Crunch really nailed this. I brought it into the house, and Carly got excited. She said, oh, it's Catalina Crunch. She knew the product. Sure. Plus, it packs a whopping 11 grams of plant-based protein, 
and nine grams of fiber per serving. Uh, taste for yourself why over 10,000 customers uh, rate Catalina Crunch five stars. Uh, I love the cinnamon crunch. It's fantastic. They've got eight delicious flavors to choose from, and you're going to love them all. Gluten-free, grain-free, non-GMO, only real, clean ingredients. And I look, to get into the details of this, when I eat Catalina Crunch, if you have a big bowl of sugary, carby cereal, you, you feel like you've been hit by a bus after you eat that. Mm-hmm. If you eat the Catalina Crunch, it's a different experience because you're not bringing Completely all that crap different. into your body. Yes, it's and really, really a different I love experience. the fact it stays crunchy in milk. That's one of my cereal pet peeves. This stuff holds up. It is the best. See why Catalina Crunch cereal is the fastest growing cereal brand in America. Just go to CatalinaCrunch.com slash TMOS for 15% off your first order, plus free shipping. That's CatalinaCrunch.com slash TMOS. Not sure which flavor to start with? Try a variety pack and check out their delicious cookies and snack mixes while you're at it. Uh, again, that's oh, snack mixes. Snack. 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 That's CatalinaCrunch.com slash TMOS. Snack. For 15% off your first order, plus free shipping. Thank you to Catalina Crunch. Glad to have them aboard. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the homepage. This is the homepage, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Simon Cowell should really learn to wear a helmet while riding his e-bike. Uh, he got into another crash. Oh, no. It. Another You're one? just... I don't know. You're just not the qualified. The man almost died three years ago. I know. And I believe he broke his back in three places, and he's still out there riding his e-bike. Uh, last Thursday in London, he was going 20 miles per hour on a wet road when he slipped and flew over the handlebars. Mike, it's called an e-bike because that's the sound he makes right before he crashes. Yee! Simon had to go to the hospital, but he was uh, released the same day with a broken left arm and a badly bruised cheek. Oh, my cheek. Oh, the cheek. Uh, and he probably got a concussion. The source said Simon had blood all over his face. Face, oh, uh, like something from Phantom of the Opera. Is there blood on people's faces in Phantom of the Opera? Oh, like where the white part yeah, was yeah, with yeah, the yeah. mask. That's a stupid way to write. Uh, another, <laughs> another source <laughs> added that Simon is doing well and healing at him. Uh, his last e-bike accident was August 2020 when he broke his back in three places. And uh, when know, I was doing this story, I, I saw Simon on a beach with someone, a paparazzi, took a picture of his back scar. <laughs> yes, that was fun to look at. When Very you break your back, you really got to go see Dr. Larry Chicago. Hey, <laughs> just put a little ice on it, Simon. You'll be good as new back on that e-bike. What, what do you think? Uh, you, uh, Simon Kyle rides his bike like Rob runs a board. Uh, do, you, um, do, you, do you feel like he, needs, he needed to get back on that bike to get over that fear? Because I feel like... If I have an accident, I don't need to conquer that anymore. I'm I'm good. I think, and you would know this, uh, that he's got an exercise routine, mm-hmm. and that bike is a huge part of it. Especially, uh, we, you know, Simon and I are close to the same age, and I think that that is a uh, you know, biking is kind of a big deal for you know people that are getting it's, a little it's long great in on the, the knees. Don't want to don't want to crack yeah. you know crack their knees. Uh, that's probably the deal. He just did it. For the exercise. But what I don't get is the 20 miles an hour on a uh, wet road. Because you're zipping along on, a on bike. an e-bike. Really yeah, so it's yeah, not really e-bike. exercise then, right? Well, it, 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 with, with the e-bike, Pedal really, what they mm-hmm. have them all down here. You know, if you're on an area where you, you need a little extra, but it sounds like he might be using it kind of like a motorcycle. Yeah, that man. To get from point A to What point he B. needs is a Peloton. <laughs> Stay in the home. <laughs> Porsche is selling an e-bike for $10,000 in their dealerships. If I see one of those, uh, I cannot guarantee that I'm not going to just jerk that steering wheel a little bit. <laughs> just a little nudge. The just only reason I nudge. know is it came up on my feed on one of the most expensive e-bikes on the market. And I guess these Highline automobiles are coming out with this. Right on, yeah. Mercedes came out with one just last week, but Porsche oh, just God. released theirs. It, with all of the extras, it's fifteen grand. And this is what's crazy. Mike, I don't even think that's too high because when I went to get a bike with Pony uh, for Shannon... He was looking at like twenty thousand dollar bikes, like it was no big deal. I have a question regarding uh, the By city. Way, I mean, it was less than a G, and I was heartbroken. Yeah, it sadness. would seem to me that the e-bike, I mean, for legitimate transportation, great city dweller bike, right? I would have think you ever so. flirted with the idea of grabbing one for your commute down here to I, M Street? Like I had one on time. order at one point. I remember really? that. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I said, you know what? 
I don't like the way these assholes drive around here. It was the Kia one, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, the, the Kia, Kia one. Yeah. The Kia e-bike. The Kia e-bike. Yes, sir. I canceled the uh, order. The lovely Giselle Bündchen uh, wrote a message to Tom Brady after he retired. Uh, it was I, I refused to read Tom Brady's statement after he said he wasn't retiring and then he retired. So terrible. After. I know. It wasn't nearly because it's blah, 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 blah. Uh, it wasn't nearly as long as Tom's post, but it was incredibly heartfelt. She said, quote, I'm so proud of you and of everything you have had to overcome physically and emotionally over the years. I'm in awe of your dedication and of everything you have achieved. You are the most dedicated, focused, and mentally tough person I have ever met. Uh, you never once complained over the years about all the bruises and aches and pains. But look, that's the truth when you're talking about an NFL quarterback. There's no way that you are not waking up on a Monday morning uh, having trouble to get out of bed. She also said, quote, when I met you over 15 year go- years ago, I didn't know the first thing about football, but cheering for you and seeing you do what you love most made me learn about this wonderful game to the point that I seriously believed I knew more than the referees. That's cute. <laughs> that's sweet. That's, that's sweet. loving. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Bra- okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, one of the most underrated the comedy worst. teams of all time is back. Bob Odenkirk and David Cross the from best. Mr. Show. Uh, well, the Bob Odenkirk part is the best. No, them together uh, are really, really I know. funny. Uh, he, well, David Cross should, you know, hug the guy. Yeah, he should. Uh, he should. They're reteaming for a series on Paramount called Guru Nation. This sounds funny. They'll play rival cult leaders who are, quote, manipulating the minds of their deluded followers. Uh, these days, Odenkirk is better known for playing uh, Better Call Saul, uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Uh, and also uh, Nobody, which is still great movie. a great revenge. It was on sort HBO of, uh, last night, as a matter of I fact. I watched it. Yeah. I watched a good chunk of it last night. Uh, Cross was Tobias Funk on Arrested Development. Funk. And uh, yeah, we had David Cross on the show once. Yeah, he's time. very okay. angry. Very he's angry. A, yeah, it's just, you know, it's like a comedian coming in. Uh, but anywho, uh, we're two weeks away from Valentine's Day. And so here's a reminder to start thinking about it if you haven't already, uh, because people are spending more than usual. And I get that with people being homebound. Yeah. It's not just inflation. I might be in that category. I don't want to talk about it right now, but I might talk about it later because I uh, I did a little shopping last night. Oh, look night. at you. I was in my underwear, though, and then uh, when they called for a credit card, I didn't uh, want to. I was too lazy to get up, so mm. it's somewhere in a It's somewhere in a, in a shopping Were you in a online. store or were you shopping online? Online. Because you were in your underwear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I went in my boxers into like, uh, like the, the gemstones? The <laughs> <laughs> the fabulous Mike, gems. You got to yeah. watch it. It's, I have to catch so up. I'm already. Fun. I've started the first one. So uh, good. It's you know, so with good. the bike, with a bicycle, the, where he's you know he's riding the bicycle all the way, uh, and the <laughs> also. The, I mean, I'm just at the beginning. Okay, but the problem with the younger brother oh, yeah. that they oh, want the older brother yeah, yeah, to take care so of. So great, and, but also there is there is, is a so plot funny. line that you do not see coming that is yeah, so I'm sensational. I am all in on that one. Uh, okay, the average person with a significant a significant other expects to shell out two hundred eight dollars this year, up forty four percent. The average was one hundred and forty four last year. A total of four hundred sixteen dollars per couple if you have joint finances. Uh, the biggest spenders are people who are just a year or two into their relationships. Uh, they expect to drop an average of two hundred forty seven dollars. On the flip side, people who are less than a year into their relationships are only spending $186. I don't get hmm. that. It's, it's too close. Have you guys uh, made plans yet? We traditionally yeah, yeah. don't do anything for Valentine's Day. <laughs> her choice, she hates it. But I might get her chocolate. Yeah, the kids day. like it. <laughs> I don't even you understand what that means. You might want to not accept that. Yes, that's what we're saying. Did that's, you hear, that's why did you hear, did you hear the whole sentence? You said no, you I might. Didn't. No. You said he might. I might get some chocolates and I'll probably get her some champagne. She likes that. You might, you might want to you know, do something. Yeah. Like that money uh, does, and does sh- include and shop in my uh, boxer Maybe go spelunking or something. That that money does oh, include dear. eating out. Thirty seven percent of couples are planning to go. <laughs> she doesn't like Valentine's Day, <laughs> uh, which is up from twenty six percent last year when we didn't have vaccines. Thirty nine percent of couples hello, opted hello. to skip uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> What's the hello hello that I never mind? We don't have to unpack the joke. No, it's just Please. a side. It's probably side oh, yeah, all right. Okay, now. thanks. Okay, appreciate that. <laughs> Buzz. Uh, Punks I, I, Phil I'm trying to help you out. Is, is the uh, is the groundhog everyone pays attention to, but lots of other towns have their own weather predicting rodents, including Milltown, <laughs> Milltown, New Jersey, 
Uh, that's about halfway between uh, New York City and Trenton. It's, don't you still have a? You have an A-frame there, right? <laughs> I, I have a condo. <laughs> oh, uh, nice. <laughs> fifth floor condo. Luxury stairs condo. only. Yes. <laughs> It's a walk up when you want to it's take a, walk a, up. a weekend yeah. in Milltown. <laughs> Absolutely, always a uh, long weekend, Mike. Always DoorDash. <laughs> uh, they've got a groundhog named Milltown Mel. What haven't I done for you? <laughs> it's the only uh, rodent with cufflinks. <laughs> that's right, big giant cufflinks and monograms. Mel also predicts uh, if it'll be in early spring, but they had to cancel their event this year because Mel dropped dead. Oh, oh no! No. They announced his death on Facebook and said they couldn't find a replacement in time. So they had no choice but to cancel the event. The good news is they say Mel lived a pretty long life for a groundhog. His exact age isn't clear, but they only live around three years in the wild. And I guess Mel did a lot better than that. You know, did you do you have anything else from Groundhog Day? Because I saw a fact today that surprised me is that What's when that? the in Punxsutawney, the original ceremony in the 1800s ended with the eating of the groundhog. Really? Yes. Isn't they that great? it and ate it? Yeah. I watched I it live taste. this morning. It is, I mean, it is one bad broadcast away from just being canceled. Oh, it's is, the worst. Uh, what's the what's the dilly? So, yo? Oh, uh, six, we more weeks, more six more weeks. Six so more weeks. So he saw his shadow. And the guy, the Rue, who was reading it, that poor man. With the top hat? He lost his place in his scroll oh, in no. the middle of the announcement. So be it advised that and I he, don't know where I am. He I've legit been said, yep. I'm sorry, I've lost my place. Give me a moment. And oh, he's, no. He's, they're doing a live shot as a gag on CNBC, and you can see the anchors being like, let's move on. This guy has no idea what's well, going I think on. They ought, to file, they ought to fire Brian Doyle Murray. <laughs> Groundhog Day. <laughs> Who is not only, if you watch Groundhog Day, is not only the guy that is announcing the ceremony, but he's also the disc jockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see what's on the roll. Let's see what's on the radio right now, Mike. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Here's the report. The National Weather Service is calling for a big blizzard thing. Yes, they are. But you know, there's another reason why today is especially exciting. Especially cold. Especially cold. Okay. But the big question on everybody's lips. Yeah, their chap lips. On their chap lips. Chap right. <laughs> Do you think Phil's going to come out and see a shadow? Punks a Tony Phil. That's right, Woodchuck Chuckers. It's Groundhog Day. Get up and check that <laughs> hog out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did a pretty good job of being DJs. <laughs> oh, they hated DJs. <laughs> the comedians and actors hate DJs. They do. That's what they we do. all are. Oh, yeah, well, your chap lips. But that's exactly what we are. We're interrupting assholes. That's what we do. Uh, and now a little something, something. You can learn a lot in college, uh, but maybe Common Sense 101 needs to be an option. A student at BC, Boston College, yeah. uh, is blowing up on TikTok after she decided to go to sleep at her boyfriend's place during the blizzard. And she forgot to close her bedroom window first. Her roommates texted her on Saturday morning and said the place was freezing for some reason. They felt a draft but couldn't get into her room because the door was locked. She told them where a spare key was. And when they walked in, it was a winter wonderland. There was a blanket of snow on everything. Her mattress, her floor, and all of her stuff in the room... Uh, wide open window with the snow coming in. They had to shovel it out the window using a dustpan. <laughs> they say she didn't uh, think the open window thing, uh, you know, was a problem because she's from California and she's not used to the cold. When she saw the snow, she said, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> That's all I have. That's but she is being pathetic. punished, Mike, for having premarital sex. Yes, yeah, God punished her with the yeah. boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Stay in your own dorm. Please. You know? That's why we pay really. for it, honey. Absolutely. And then go home with all your girlfriends. Uh, you know, after those guys from Favor try to take you out because Dawn was Fawn was killed in a kill explosion. Uh, we better we better break. Take a break. Hit me. <laughs> the TMOS bonus show has what listeners crave. It's got electrolytes. If you like TMOS, join Mike, Rob, and Oscar for the TMOS bonus show every week. Why don't we just try it and not worry about what plants crave? Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? Buy it for yourself or give it to a friend and help the show grow. Like out the toilet? I've never seen no plants grow out of no toilet. The time is now to subscribe to the TMOS Bonus Show. Do it. Do it now. Click the banner at MikeOmeraShow.com. It's got electrolytes. 
Yeah, FanDuel. We love FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56. To celebrate, new customers give it $5 to win $280 in cash on either team to win when you use promo code TMOS when registering. And you'll get your winnings in cold, hard cash because we know cash is always better than free bets. I believe I'll be putting a uh, little bit down on the Bengals. Yeah. Yes, it, it makes the game more fun, plus all the prop bets you could ever want. From the coin flip, oh, that's a fun bet. Yeah. That's a fun bet because it's right at the beginning. Uh, to the Gatorade bath, there's no better place to bet Super Bowl 56 than FanDuel uh, Sportsbook. By the way, Super Bowl 56 is XVVIIIVVVI. Right. Exactly right. Thank you. Uh, Let me see. They've got the same game parlays for bigger wins, promotions for new and existing customers, and more. Don't miss your chance to turn 5 bucks into $280 in cash. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and use promo code TMOS to make every moment more fun this Super Bowl. Uh, Again, promo code TMOS exclusively on FanDuel Sportsbook. 21 plus in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia. New users only. $10 first deposit required. Must wager designated offer market. Next one is two. $180. Bonus for Tennessee users fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. Tennessee credit expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXTSTEP to 53342 in Arizona. 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 800 bets off in Iowa. 800-9 with it in Indiana. 877-770-STOP in Louisiana. 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369 in New York. TN Redline 800-889-9789 in Tennessee or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. How do you do that? <laughs> Skill. It's very it's good. A, it's a very, skill. very good. You've been wanting to talk about fake IDs for a while now. Yes. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, look, I know they're a thing for uh, youngsters, but uh, Did you ever have one? Weird. Did you ever need one? Because you were eight, you, no, you the, were 18. It was, it was 18. 18. Yeah. It, it wasn't was, a big deal. It was deal. 18. I don't think I ever had one. I, I never did. I never had one. I never yeah. did. But mm-hmm. I had two experiences over the last week. One at uh, Sheets where I went in uh, after work to buy some beer. There's a common thread in both of these stories. Mm -hmm. And the guy in front of me was buying a a charger for his vape pen. And so he's obviously a kid, all right? And he says, I would like like the apple pie vape recharge or whatever it is. And the lady behind the counter chewing her gum disinterestedly, can I see an ID, please? He pulls out something that from my distance looks like it is a novelty card that you buy at a Florida gift shop. I mean, it's like it says Florida. It has his picture on it and maybe a rainbow. And he hands it to her. And she looks at it. And says, okay. And hands it back and gives him his vape. While she turns to get the vape charger, he looks at me and smiles. Good for him. Right. I got over on this. Are hey, are they doing that as much now? The vaping that was the thing for a while, but is it is it as prevalent as it, it once it's, was? Uh, Everyone here at Podcast Village does. No, no, we don't. No, it's uh, I'm kidding. It, I'm kidding. It's trashy. Remember and it, Remember it's, Mickey? It, oh yeah, and it blew oh up on his God. blew up on his. Well, leg. there's been some regulation that's come down. Yeah, right. Uh, especially with the flavored uh, vapes. They definitely but, skew towards the kids. When I see kids mm-hmm. vape or even adults. I honestly, I think it's trashier than cigarettes. I, I kid agree. you not. Yeah. I agree now. Yeah. It's somehow, I, I didn't think You that used for, to vape. Uh, I transitioned from regular cigarettes and then- You had the fake I, cigar. I have the, e, I still have e-cigars. Yeah. I still have e that I don't use that you often. use them on your inhale. e-bike? <laughs> I don't inhale, Rob. I don't <laughs> inhale my e-cigars. I don't, choo- I don't choose to do that. I, but I see, I see a guy down here in Florida- and it's, he's in his car. Yeah. And the guy, before I see the vape pen that he's got, mm-hmm. yeah. he's in front of me. Yeah. And I see what looks like a, a firework going out of his car. This mm-hmm. just cascade of Plume. vapor yes. came out. And he's got this giant uh, deal, but I don't see it nearly as much as I used to, no, especially no. around here. Oh. This is vape land down here. Yeah, I would think the- so. I would think so. The research and the class action lawsuits that said, hey, remember when you thought it was too good to be true? It is. Too good to be true. Yeah, you're putting a foreign object It's also in your lungs. destroying some of, some of like, you know, these developmental years, the psychology and addiction mm-hmm. for these kids. 
Yeah. Where they're vaping so much they can't even. You think they have a bad time because they may have ADD. They're vaping so much they they're craving nicotine so much that they can't focus. Yeah. It's such a fly by night business too. I mean, it really lots is. of shacks, lots of oh, <laughs> standalone buildings, inexpensive retail space. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like used Vape to be a bakery. <laughs> now they've laid all the vapes out on the cookie sheets. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's nasty. I just think you know it's bad. For but me, uh, this so. kid was happy that he scored his apple pie vape, and he he did. He turned to me and he smiled like, "Hey, I won." Not so lucky was the kid at the liquor store. Who you, you have two? Yeah. This was I was behind a guy. This was about a week ago, and. He gets carded, and he is, I mean, he's asking to be carded. He's wearing, like, workout shorts and compression pants under the shorts. He looks like he's 12. It's like my kid wears going to elementary school. Exactly. You know? And so he puts a bottle of, like, like Bowman's on the counter, and she says, can I see some ID? And he pulls out a piece of cardboard that might have been an ID for somebody sometime, but it is literally held together with packing tape. <laughs> And he hands it to her, and he's masked up, so you really can't even match the face. And I'm watching all this go down, and it's virtually empty, so I can hear the whole conversation. And I, she says, this appears to be expired. And he says, oh, right. Um, my current <laughs> ID is, uh, it's, uh, it's out there. She says, in the car? He says, not in the car. Just, can I leave this here and come back? And she said, and he's gone, she's gone, gone. <laughs> and I go up there and I say to her, I said, you know, I used to check groceries at a college town on, on weekend nights. And I don't think he's coming back. And she <laughs> says, I don't think he is either. She said, if I even thought there was a chance he was over 16, I would have at least asked him to take his mask down. <laughs> yeah, and then, the mask. And then, the mask. So there's, there's, yeah, that's what gets you. It's the, you have, yep. you're emboldened by the mask. And then there's, right. you know, there's usually two employees at the liquor store that I go to. One is usually like a middle aged lady, and then there's an old. Do they know man. you by first name? No, not by first name, but they do. They say recognize hi to me. you. They do recognize yeah. me. There's, <laughs> but not the cranky old man because the cranky old Just man. Just out is of the, curiosity, how many trips? Uh, you know, what's oh, your, I know what's the your answer schedule? to this. Okay, it's once a week. It is once a week. <laughs> you go to the liquor store. One, you go to the liquor store. This man. It belongs in the Betty Ford Clinic. I've been banging this drum forever. And that, now let's make sure that we're clear here. If it's beer, it's or one promises. thing. But, but you go to the hard liquor store once a week? Yeah, for yeah. vodka. Yeah. <laughs> but wait, let me finish the story. Then it's what plants right. crave. But, but the, old, the cranky old man, he never says a word except the total and your change or debit or credit. He looks at me and goes, that wasn't a very good try. <laughs> <laughs> he's seen it all but anyway so i'm just wondering you know if fake ids are a thing and the, the mask thing is a valid thing well, the, fa the fake ids just just we don't have to get too deep into it there was a huge bust <clears throat> just a week ago it's in it's in the news probably in if you just google it the feed will come up mm -hmm. within a week of like a freighter a car a container ship yeah. of fake ids they come from, from uh, china I, I know this from my daughters that really they come from and it takes a long time to get them. Yeah. And you like submit a they, picture and they mail it back they, to you? Or? They, they, all they I know it's it's real. it's 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 problematic yes. uh, when it comes to names. Uh, Oscar's right. They look completely legit. It's the names, the text, the the text McLovin. is horrible. <laughs> now you could say not, Shannon, not, but it'll be missing like two ends, so it doesn't right. really work out. Where you're like, this is an weird. interesting name. Must be European. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to ask my uh, my uh, my middle daughter about that uh, because I think that's exactly what it was. That that they look real, yeah. But then when you if you really look at the name or something, you know where it's may I Mambo Dogface. Yeah, I was gonna say it's patch. probably like it's... if when they show a newspaper headline in a movie, if you pause it and look at it, yeah. like the the story is like X P Q R L X L V N L. It doesn't right. make any sense. It just it doesn't make at, any sense at a at glance. All. It yeah. looks yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then they busted that. Better than know? going to the photo mat though. <laughs> photo mat. <laughs> well, all the photo mats very, are now vape shops. Very true. Right? <laughs> In the middle of the Mine. parking lot. Yeah, yeah but, but, I, uh... but, but the once a week with Rob. I, I remember I had to have a long conversation with him off air, and this is funny now because this was three years ago. Right. Where I asked Pony and Matt to stop drinking so much because we were eroding work product at work. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, guys, like, let's talk about your drinking habits. I know you're raging alcoholics. Let's, like, man, let's manage this. And then I said, how many times a week do you go? And I later, I, I needed to know. I'd be like, let's cut that in half maybe once every other week. But when he told me that, it, I didn't miss a beat because I was like, this is who I know. This is the man I know. When I call right. him a little later, I know when someone's been drinking on a weekday night, on a regular basis. But mm -hmm. that's his life. 
I like no, it. And uh, and, bot, and vodka is your well. Your you know what? In, in, the, in the summertime, it usually leans towards beer, but uh, it, <laughs> beer is too cold sometimes for the winter time. I by the way, I keep my booze in the studio. Oh, good. Yeah, good. as you should. And I, you know what? Occasionally, red wine. I like red wine occasionally. You'll class it up. There's yeah, sure. no real need to spend extra money on Irish whiskey when you can get Patty. <laughs> Is Patty's bad? I don't know enough about Irish whiskey. It's not bad. It's okay. fantastic, but it's but, cheap. It's, Mike, okay. it's, it's But the name is almost a slur. What's the go-to <laughs> Irish whiskey? Oh. Uh, the go-to Irish whiskey is Jameson's in the United States. But on Patty's, what we like to do is we like to market ourselves with a man with a hat that's a little wee too small. Mike, you got to ask Rob what he gets. What liter right, bottle does he What is an average purchase for, for you? And we got to take a break. But what is the average purchase for you at uh, it is at fascinating. Store? A handle of normally uh, Stoli or of, uh, what is it? The uh, uh, Hold on a second. <laughs> a half gallon? Well, a handle. It's a 1.75. Uh, it's a, it's but roughly a half gallon. I think so, yeah. Not a fifth? No. Well, if I, maybe if there's some left, I might get a fifth. You drink a handle of, of vodka a week? Sure. Wow, that's good for you. That's, congratulations. That's pretty good. That's a, what's a, How do you take it? How do you take your vodka at home? I didn't know. When did you? You were a beer guy. Well, every you know what? But you know, it's, it, beer is not so great in the winter sometimes. It's too cold. So, I, so what, what is your, how do you take your vodka? I'll now? mix it. Sometimes grapefruit juice, sometimes lemonade, sometimes, uh, sometimes a little cranberry. Hmm? Okay, that's fascinating. Isn't it though? I didn't know. Half gallon. By the way, a handle. Maybe I've got a handle. You know, it's well, Russian right. for water. Yes. yes. Yes, Mike. Pony coming in crisp. Yes. And Let hot. Me, uh, and by the way, you, you can laugh great, at me for how much is left. This is from, uh, uh, this is where, really, I think last, uh, maybe middle of the summer we had this. That is a. Oh, Tito's handle. is another great yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm, that is yeah. a handle. But I, I, who am I to talk? <laughs> the cupboard is almost but bare. But Mike, if you it? equate, and let's take like just sheer golfing days, right? If you equate the golfing days, how much are you yes. drinking on, on the course during the summer? Mm -hmm. How much do you think uh, you're drinking? How much do I drink on the course? No, afterwards. After. Like just the day. The day. My average? Yes. Uh, when I do it, which is mm, maybe once a week, or uh, at, at a, if you're going to push it two, two times a week, two beers each day. That's it? I yeah. thought you guys would tailgate afterwards. I mean, is there uh, sometimes Friday, Friday? I was gonna say, no, like on Friday, do you sometimes? Friday, Friday. <laughs> I think I did two beers and then uh, a little cab. I got it. Oh sure, cab. And then a fight with the other football. A fight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, believe me, I'm not trying to take the high road no, at all. No, no certainly no, not. I was in a liquor store two weeks ago and bought this. Because it's my how sipping whiskey. How much is that? A, a bottle. It of was patties. super cheap, like in the twenties. Okay, all right, and yeah, it, and, it's, yeah. and it holds up. It's delicious. Yeah, because there is it's a fantastic. there's a fake there's a fake crown called a Canadian Hunter that is uh, pennies to the dollar. That's pretty good. Our Irish whiskey traces its roots back to 1779, <laughs> but its true name did not come until much later when a salesman by the name of Patty Flaherty roamed pub. Patty pub, Flaherty. Patty Flaherty, <laughs> with a sales pitch of equal parts smooth triple distilled whiskey, good humor, and revelry. Patty was as beloved as the whiskey he sold, and no smart smart. I'm sorry, in no small part because of the free rounds he'd give at every stop. Did Patty hate the coach of the other team? He, uh, <laughs> Patty at one point saw the coach of the seven and eight year olds wearing uh, the plays on his sleeve like a, a professional NFL quarterback. That's when Patty took to wanting to fight. <laughs> fight Patty. everybody. Oh, there Patty. We yeah, well, uh, but he is who is without guilt. Or it goes something like yes, that. Yes, it's fine. Yes, yes. It's the Bible. Uh, we'll take a break. <laughs> it's we'll come the back Bible, and that's the name of our show. <laughs> with uh, more fun on the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, whoa. Running late as usual. Happy birthday. It's cold outside, Karen. So I wanted to remind you to visit the TMOS Shopping Center, Target, and Walmart. They'll never be frosty when they greet you. And they have everything you need this winter. Corn cob pipes, red and yellow scarves, enchanted top hats. They even have space heaters. But don't buy that, Karen, or I'll have to kill you. I'm serious. Just access Target and Walmart through the Michael Mary Show website, and you'll be back again someday if Frosty doesn't murder you. Ha 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 ha. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. There is no better time than right now to make sure you are feeling like your best self. And that's exactly my plan with the help 
of my favorite hydration product, Liquid IV. One stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Plus, Liquid IV has incredible hydration flavors like watermelon, lemon lime, strawberry. Oh, my God, I love the strawberry. Pina colada and now grape. Grape is so good. Oy, what oy. mix? Le- did you get grape yet? Yeah. Did your grape, oh, yeah. did oh, your grape so come good. in? My grape came in, and it's like it's, it's the flavor of my childhood. It's so great, and it's good for you. That's the great thing about it. Well, what makes it effective is CTT, Cellular Transport Technology. It's the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium to deliver water and nutrients to the bloodstream super fast. Plus, Liquid IV is out to change the world by donating to hospitals, first responders, veterans, and active military. Liquid IV has donated over 19 million servings globally. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TMOS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com. Calm, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't get to tell this story yesterday, uh, but uh, Winslow is now uh, dominating the marital bed by sleeping in between Mrs. O'Mara and I. Between. With his back, tween, and back towards Mrs. O'Mara uh, with all the Ball Crusher McGee stories that I told about my son when he was little. And now he'll pop in occasionally, but not nearly as much. Uh, nothing, nothing will compare to the agony uh, that I was awakened with when Winslow's Boston Terrier paws. Oh, uh, he he's had strong. Some little dream spaz. Yeah, he in was the middle chasing of the rabbits. Night, yeah, thrust his little rear paws that are are just like kangaroo legs into my crotch. Oh, and, uh, no. I, so I, he's he, facing you, and is is his head no, up towards your he, head? Or yeah, he's facing me, his back, and he's literally. If you took a picture. You'd have Carla's head, Winslow's head, and my head. Mm-hmm. He sleeps. Hey, Mo. Up, uh, he sleeps. <laughs> now, he'll go down. Uh, dogs like to den. The foot of the they bed. They like to go into the den. Yeah. So they will go to the bottom of the bed sometimes under the cover. Yeah. I don't know how they breathe down yeah. there, but they like it. Frankie's spent a lifetime down there. I hope Frankie's bronchitis clears up. Frankie's been going around the house just going, oh, oh. Does he have a oh, sense of oh. smell? Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's El Bicho. Sure. What's that? The COVID. What is El Bicho? Is that what the dogs, what, dogs get the COVID? It. Really? Yeah, the uh, uh, the white tailed deer in DC are getting COVID. Really? Yeah. That's weird. That isn't isn't it? It's weird because they it's hard to make them stay six feet apart. <laughs> wow. Bro. I got nothing after that. <laughs> I got absolutely. That's not even. Was that anything? Yes. <laughs> Try to put a mask. Try to put a mask you can't on control people, <laughs> let alone deer. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I was promised today that I would get Podville people. What happened? You're you're not you're never going to do it, are you? I know. I this w- is just I will. like your I, it, you, for, really. But, but for me, what this is the, hamana hamana no, hamana. We have a COVID. We're in the middle of an outbreak in the middle of a city. Everybody's wearing masks in this building except for us right now, and only during showtime. And only during up. showtime. So to bring somebody in right now, you, you, are you backing them up on this story? No. Well, I mean, the mask thing is true. I mean, I believe it. That's why I'm not giving them a hard time because yeah. I believe it. this isn't like the uh, you know the LinkedIn thing, which is just a total <laughs> affront. This is this. Uh, this. This is, is this. Like we wear, we have to wear these N95s in Where the common do areas. You stand. I hear stories about cities uh, in decline. Are is DC not in decline? It's yet? in a it's in a moral decline. <laughs> <laughs> No, there is a decline. But Did you take one of your pills during the show? Is that what happened? Before that, and during, yeah. yeah. The last it absorbs minute, alcohol. Getting, um, do, you, uh, do, do you feel like... I have a pill that makes funny. Maybe you could try one of those. Do you feel mm-hmm. like the city uh, is in a space where they mandate, okay, you can decide when you want to wear your masks? No. Right now, the city is in a place where if you walk into a public area, you have to wear your mask. Yep. Mm-hmm. I had, uh, where I live... Where we live right now, you have to wear a mask in you any public to. area. Right. right. So you're 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 one of the cities that I, I'm more curious as to not what the protocols are, but what are the the numbers. Uh, numbers. They're starting, the numbers to, starting they're starting to, they're starting to come down. Because I hear no. East Coast and yeah. that's when I wonder about this. You've got the stealth program. Omicron <laughs> uh, variant coming through. Which will get more people sick. Mm-hmm. I could, you know, <clears throat> talking about the coach last week and all that, I could you know, it's so hard. I want to mellow. I want to mellow. Maybe I couldn't do this show well if I mellowed out. I, I want to be, 
I want to be better. I want to be Mike, nicer. Mike, you could mellow. I, you could. But you know what? The world right now is not allowing anyone to mellow. I got the uh, – I ordered online – a big box of N95 masks, and they are better. They're better. They seal. And we all, the whole family, mm -hmm. uh, went into the Publix, the Publix down here, grocery <laughs> yes. store, and Michael wore his kid's mask, and Carl mm -hmm. and I were wearing the N95s. And I get one of these. I get one of these, like, the the, the little look where she shakes her head. And, yeah. I, you know, I you know I really want to, I, I wanted to, I wanted to, like, Scream! I feel. I want to I, scream. I feel for you, and this is where I, Mike. I honestly do not envy you or those that are living in California or Miami, where you know, the idea it, it. We should be in a space now. We're all educated enough. Like even if you saw someone wearing a mask, where not the most most people don't wear masks. What about giving them a pass? To, maybe they have an autoimmune. Maybe they couldn't get the vaccine. Like, what about no, all of those? That like, would require just, compassion. Yeah, that would require empathy. Instead of judging those are things that on one particular uh, group of people that don't exist. And look, you know what the other people might say that don't believe in any of the science? They might say, "Well, what about the empathy for letting me ex uh, exercise my right to uh, not?" It's we we. Someone long ago created this yeah. narrative to divide us, and it's silly. Donald Trump? I just, uh, it was Donald Trump, and it yeah. happened, and now that's kind of a badge of honor, and it sucks. But I will tell you, for those of you that might be interested, uh, the N95s, uh, if I'm hopping on an airplane, that's the only mask I would wear well, Of course. And cool. I didn't wear that back in June. Remember when we thought things were going to get better, and mm -hmm. I traveled out west? I used a uh, cloth one. Didn't get sick, thank God. But I think the N95s are well, uh, as they good masks. Anything to have is better than nothing. We have mandated right. these N95s. We purchased them for our team. Mm -hmm. Like we have mm -hmm. them here. They're the best. Um, and look, it's not comfortable. I'm not saying it's comfortable. No, it's a, it's, it's a better mask for preventing. It's, it's particles. harder to breathe. It's yeah. a little tougher to breathe. Yes. That's why I also uh, told Mrs. O'Mara. Halfway through our little shopping trip, when she was trying to get me to, uh, you know, get the right count on lemons and limes, hey, alcohol. Uh, <laughs> you know, I rolled. I rolled on that. Yeah, you're you like, know? I'll see it's you a, outside. It's a crazy, crazy, crazy. At the grocery store the other day, I saw something that so, was magnificent. Mike. I saw a guy with an M90, the 95 mask under his nose, using hand sanitizer. What, as soon as they drop the mask mandate that we can we can actually sit in a room together without masks, I believe you. We'll I'll bring in meet who the pod be, villers. Yeah, who will be first on your hit parade? Just out of, off the top of my head, the closest mask. proximity, Elise Smullen. Yeah, that would be my guess. Too. Yes, she's great. Uh, From Palo Alto, California, I think she went oh. to UC Berkeley. Uh, spent some time on yeah, Capitol Hill. Spent some time on Capitol Hill. I think you'd love her. Very exciting. Yes. See, something to look forward to. There you are. That's all. Mm. I'm placated. And then and our uh, second will be Dan O'Brien. Yes. <laughs> Also I've met him before. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and I'll get right on that uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I can help page. you. I'd love to help you. I, I know how to do it. It's got a camera up in the corner. I know how to upload a picture. For God's sakes, I'm you drag, smart. You drag, you drop. Can you play the thing so I can go to commercial? What does this mean? <laughs> Did you do that? you for the whole show. I do, I do it every break. <laughs> and then I get, why do you think we're getting into the promos before the thing ends? Because I'm doing that. What, do you want another signal? How about this, Rob? How about this? <laughs> Handle of vodka. Handle of vodka. We'll be back with Rob's thing next. I'm trying yeah. not to get upset. Mike, I did not miss that insult either. I heard it. I'm a CEO. <laughs> Nothing has to do with our show. We're just a little early morning pain in the ass that he has to get through. All right, why aren't you working for me? Glad you're so goddamn happy about it. La, la, la. What about our show? What about guests? Enjoy 2022. <laughs> Talking to each other. I still love you. You're not the hot chick anymore. You're the crazy chick. Wow. You bastard. Always remember, to have a friend, you must be a friend. The Mike O'Mara Show, where your friends are. Thank you. Welcome back to the uh, Mike O'Mara Show. It's kind of weird when I do that right before we go to In that real time. Program. Yeah, it's just timing sometimes, like right? We, we, yeah. we scripted it. Almost. Uh, even in the best schools, your child probably isn't getting the one-on-one -on -one teaching that they need to reach their potential. In a big classroom, teachers just don't have the time to focus their approach. At Baiju's Future School, students get personalized attention and a world-class learning experience completely online to supplement their in-person school education. 
Baiju's math and music courses help build a core of knowledge and self-confidence. And with Baiju's coding course, students get the fundamentals of coding through their favorite games like Roblox and my son's all-time favorite Minecraft. Yes. They'll have tons of fun while learning about the technology that makes games, apps, and cryptocurrencies possible. Oscar enrolled his nephew, mm -hmm. and he's loving it. Join the millions of parents accelerating their kids' learning today. Right now, Baiju's Future School is offering our listeners their first class free. Just go to baijus.com slash podcast to sign up for your first class. Absolutely free. That's B-Y-J-U-S dot com slash podcast. It's slash podcast because we're feels like we're carrying the weight of all the podcasts on our shoulders. <laughs> so please, <laughs> please do it. Little one out there, a crumb cruncher. Can I can oh, I give a quick thing. sidebar just yeah. about Baiju? Yes. You yes. Um, my nephew, where he's at now, from when he started before the break, before the holiday break, mm -hmm. it's just it's so wonderful to see this progress. So it actually works. That's awesome. That's great. I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's fantastic. And it's time for Sound Town. Did you hear that? Listen about a sound. Do you hear? The There's a new sound. The sound. sound Town. Mike, do you still have your uh, explosion sound effect? I do. Okay, just wanted to make sure because whenever we go down the Bob Rivers road of a hot parody record, I want to make mm -hmm. sure you're ready. Oh, God, I think you're going go. to enjoy this as hot as today's headlines. Ray! Yes, it's official. You're retiring as the greatest quarterback of all. I thought you'd hit it on official, so it actually went a little longer than I thought. Yeah, because it was he he ate Brady. Yes, yeah. of course. Right? Yeah, didn't he? Uh, yeah, Brady. sloppy. He was just sloppy and lazy yeah, and but, quick. And but uh, Jimmy Kimmel had this to say. Tom Brady did a lot for the Patriots and for Tampa and the sport of football, but he's also done a lot. For goats, you know, people don't mention before they were associated with him, they were like the 12th most popular farm animal. The big question now is what happens to Gronk? I mean, do they just release him into the Everglades? I think it's a good plan. I do, actually. That's a great line. <laughs> oh, that's one of his writers probably that came to, they release him into the Everglades. Now, that's speaking funny. of late night, yesterday was the 40th anniversary of the, uh, the late night franchise that David Letterman started, now hosted by Seth Meyers. And Dave had right. a great appearance. Appearance. Not a sizzling great appearance. It was very low key. But there's a promo floating around with Letterman too for what his next project is, where he's just laughing. Oh, and really? I've not seen it. Well, what... it's funny. I don't know what the next thing he's doing. Well, I think I, what I it is is they they sort of buried the lead. Is that there is now a Letterman YouTube page that has almost the entire uh, yeah. catalog from NBC, and also it appeared to me this morning with a cursory glance, CBS stuff, so his entire mm -hmm. run, and mm -hmm. I saw a lot of things, and they spotlighted one that was one of the bits that got me, and I was 11 when they did it, and I remember it clearly. They did elevator races oh, at, wow. at NBC Studios. with They would pe take people out of the audience. They were assigned one of the three elevators, and they had to go down, and in this one, they actually had Bob Costas. Elevator races. NBC sportscaster Bob Costa. Bob? As the competitors come off the cars, these lovely young ladies will be waiting to refresh them with a quick drink of water, an opportunity to towel off, and then most importantly, grabbing the official late night torch before heading back onto the elevator. But keep in mind, as David mentioned, the elevator may close while you're grabbing your torch, and so you'll be left down here just like any other chump at 30 Rock. <laughs> Clara, congratulations. Let me give you this lovely homemade oh, trophy. It's just beautiful. How was it? How was the big race? Well, it was tiring. Uh huh. You look exhausted. <laughs> I am. Yeah. It was very, it was lots of fun. Uh -huh. Have any, Met have... some very nice people on the elevator. Uh -huh. <laughs> what I was reminded of watching it, and Letterman sort of uh, alluded to this during his interview, is that. He loved the fact that this was only three channels back in the day of right. only three channels, and they could purposely be as weird as they wanted <laughs> to almost try fun. to put people. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, if you only know Letterman from the angry CBS Letterman, I invite you to look at the angry NBC Letterman because it's a different animal. Well, here's what it was with Letterman. I don't mind stunting uh, if it's done the Letterman way. Right. When it's done the Jimmy Fallon way, I can't stand it. Uh, I don't know why, but I, I mean, know the, why. The, the, I know why because Fallon is doing all of his stunts to be watched on the computer the next it's day. So it's like bit, Dave's bit, bit, Dave's bit, stunts. Bit, bit, right. Dave's stunts were designed to make you tune in it, late at night. In fairness right. to Fallon. 
the landscape of entertainment was completely different when Letterman yes, was around. That's true. It was. That's true. And, and, it, it and was. you could you could rot there as a bit evolved because they weren't going to go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And we stole uh, the concept of doing bits like that. Uh, Interacting with employees, walking yep. down hallways. I mean, it was so much. I fun love to that. Do. When I would listen to Don and Mike, that was like, that's I, what we did. I wanted to know. That's what I wanted to figure out. Mike, you yep. should definitely check it out on t- online because Dave also goes way into depth about dealing with bits with his mother, which is very funny. Dorothy Letterman. Oh my God! And I mean, you, you, she was one in a million. It was Absolutely so great, incredible. David. <laughs> David, hello, David. And uh, let's close with this: the reason that we're the greatest worst country in the world. Hormel is having a prize, uh, a, a contest where you can win a half keg of chili cheese dip. Oh, a half keg, Mike. It comes with its own warmer. One can, over one thousand servings, ten thousand percent of your daily. Mike, can you stop it right there? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Hi. Okay. I know I don't have active representation, but you got a guy doing the Facenda voice. Okay. You got a guy that you're doing. I'm over here. Yeah. I'm over here now. Yeah. For the love of God. And they get that guy. One can. You know, come on now. How about one can? Oh, a better. A can of yeah. chili yeah. cheese. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. You're right. It's not you're right. complicated. Introducing the greatest appetizer Yum. ever made of all time. The Hormel Chili Cheese Keg. Tap into greatness. And the good news, Mike, is if you win it, you also win the ability to shit your brains out. Yay! <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> now leaving SoundCloud. Please come again. Hey, tomorrow on the show, uh, we might have some new music. We might have some new stuff going on. I like to refresh. How about you turn that down? Thank you. Uh, I will tell you, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, trying to refresh things. Busy in the lab. Busy, busy, busy. You know, new alarms and stuff like that. Like anytime Pony has something to say. Is that okay with you, Pony? I think so. No, no, you have to wait for him to play. Because I don't know how to run a board myself. I press it and it's gone. You know why? Because the, uh, you know, the pad, the, the pad. mouse pad. Yes. 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 I, I, pre- I just figured it out. After we've been doing this show, we're in our 13th year. Mm-hmm. Yes, right? exactly. I just figured that. Turn that down, douche. Uh, I'm going to have to have a conversation with myself. Come oh, on. no, 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 um, no. It is the wrong part of the mouse pad. I press the wrong part of the mouse pad and I delete it. I guarantee you that's what it is. Mm-hmm. You think? I press the upper left hand corner of the mouse pad and it's gone. Delete. That's what I believe. That's my story and I'm sticking to I it. I love it. Uh, we'll, we'll be back it. with a uh, brand new, and I got to go my air horn again. God damn it. Uh, for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, <laughs> this is Mike Gomera saying so long. I got to go listen to music. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike Gomera bonus show. <laughs> Get it at MichaelMaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. I was floating, just like you.